Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on React Events and Forms. In this tutorial, we are going to explore how to handle events and work with forms in React applications. React provides a convenient way to manage user interaction and gather input through its event system and form components. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to capture user actions, handle events and work with form data in React. Now before we move on, I request you guys that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first, we are going to start our session with handling events in React. Moving ahead, we are going to study about working with forms. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with a hands-on on front-end development with React. So let's start with handling events in React. React event system allows you to capture and respond to various user interactions such as clicks, keystrokes, mouse movements, and many more. To handle events in React components, you can attach event listeners to the specific elements using special event attributes like on click, on key down, or on mouse move. When an event occurs, React calls the corresponding event handler function that you provide inside the event handler, where you can write custom code to perform actions based on the user's interaction. This can include updating component state, making API requests, or triggering animations. React event system follows a synthetic event approach, which means that events objects are reused and pooled for performance reasons. This allows React to optimize event handling and provide a consistent interface across different browsers. Now, let's move to the next part, which is writing the event handlers. When writing an event handler, you have to access to an event object which provides information about the event which has occurred, which can include properties like target, the element that has triggered the event, and key code for keyboard events. Basically, to handle events in React, you will typically define event handler functions within your components code. These functions should be passed as props to the corresponding elements that need to respond to the user interaction. Within the event handler, you can manipulate component state using set state or call other functions to update your application's logic. It is important to note that you should avoid directly mutating the state to ensure the React's reactivity. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding writing event handlers in React. Now let's move on and understand about event delegation and event bubbling. Do you know friends that React follows the principle of event delegation and event bubbling? which allows you to handle events at higher level components and propagate them down to the component tree. This enables more efficient event management and reduces the need for attaching event listeners to every individual element. By attaching event listeners to the parent components, you can capture events from child components and handle them centrally. This simplifies the code and improves the performance especially when dealing with a large number of dynamically generated elements. So, as we have seen about these concepts about event handling, at the end, I want to just say that by attaching event listeners to the elements and providing event handler functions, you can respond to user interactions and create interactive user interfaces. Understanding event handling in React empowers you to build dynamic application that engages users and provide a rich user experience. Now let's move on and understand about working with forms in React. Do you know friends that forms play a crucial role in collecting user input? React offers powerful features to handle form data efficiently. In this tutorial, we will also explore how to create control components, handle form submission and implement form validations in React application. Now let's move on and understand about controlled components. In React, controlled components are a recommended approach or managing form input. A control component is a form of element whose value is controlled by a React state. This means that component state hold the current value of the input and any changes to the input that trigger an update to the state. To create a control component, you need to define a state property that corresponds to the input value. Then you can attach an onChange event listener to the input element and update the state with a new value whenever the user interacts with the input. As a result, React ensures that the UI and the component state stay in sync. Using controlled components provides several benefits, such as easier validation, 
and the ability to manipulate the input value before rendering it. I hope so, you would have got a brief idea regarding the control components. Now let's move on and understand about handling form submissions. React provides an effective way to handle form submissions through the on-submit event of a form element. Whenever the user submits the form, this event is triggered, thus allowing you to execute a custom logic. To handle the form submission, you'll need to define an event handler function which is going to assign it to the onSubmit attribute of the form element. Within this function, you can access the form data and perform any necessary actions such as sending the data to the server or updating the application state. To prevent the default behavior of the form submission, which means like page refresh, you can call the prevent default method of the event object passed on the event handler function. This allows you to exactly handle the form submission entirely within your React application. Now let's move on and understand about form validation. Do you know friends that form validation is a crucial for ensuring that user input meets a criteria before it is submitted. React provides an ideal environment for implementing form validation due to its component based architecture and state management capabilities. You can perform validation by adding additional logic within the event handler function for the form submission. This logic can be checked if the form data meets specific conditions such as required fields being filled or the input values matching a certain format. If the validation fails, you can display error messages to the user and prevent the form from being submitted. React also allows for a real-time validation by validating the input on each on-change event of the form fields. This approach provides an instant feedback to the user and helps in preventing erroneous data from being submitted. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding form validation. Now let's move on to our hands-on session where we are going to try all these concepts which we have learned right now. So guys, we are using VS Code for our hands-on session. So in this session, we are going to be learning about event handling and React Forms. So first let's create our app. So guys, for creating a React application, you have to type npx create react app and the name of your app. For this project, I have chosen the name my app. So after typing this, just right click on this. So your react application will be made. So you have to wait for some point of time for this libraries to install. So as you know guys that react is a JavaScript framework, which is popularly used for building the front end part of the website. Now we are going to be trying to create the form validation, the event handling, and all those things whose concept we have studied earlier. Okay guys, now as you can see, all the packages are installed. Now, we are gonna get directed to our My App and then we are gonna start our application. So for navigating to our app, just type cd My App. So we are in our My App folder and now then you can type npm start. So this command is going to start our React application. So as you can see guys, this is our React logo and this is basically our React application. You can edit all these things, but for right now, we'll be leaving all those things and understand the few crucial concept which we have discussed earlier. Now, let's create the control inputs in our application. So for the same, go to SRC of your folder, okay? Go to the app.js and delete everything. It would sound a little bit astonishing, but you have to delete all the thing. So after deleting it, what you have to do? You have to create a consta function. So this is an arrow function basically. And here you have to return a div. Now at the very end, you have to export your app. So don't forget this export default app. Now this is our application basically. This is a very simple function which we have created. Now let's create another file called user profile in our application. Now guys, we have created our file called user profile.jsx. Now the first thing we have to do is let's import our use state hook. So type import then curly braces use state okay from react. 
So after this, what you have to do, let's create our application and say this as user profile. So guys, we have created our function user profile. And in this, I'm returning with our div with a class name called app. And there's an H2 tag which says provide your profile details. Now let's create our form tag. So inside form tag, there is a div tag. And inside this, there is a label tag for in which we have written the name field. And there is a called name. And then we are closing our label tag in which we have an input tag with ID called name field, type called text and value called name. Okay. Now let's move on and do further development. Now let's create an email field. So let's create a div tag in which we have a label for email field. There's an input tag with ID called email field, type called text and value called email. Then let's create our another field. Then there is a div tag with a label called age field. As you can see, with input ID called age field, type called number, value called age. Similarly, there is another div tag with label for password field. There is an input ID called password field, type called text, value called password. Now let's create our button. So for the same, I will say button type button in which there will be a submit. So this is basically our form in which we have this name, email, age and password. And finally, now I have a button all over here in which while clicking it, it's going to give all your data for which we have created an input fields. I hope so. It's pretty much clear to you. It's a very easy concept. Now let's export our this application. So for the same type export default. So as you can see, the name of our application is user profile. So type user and profile. So this exports our this function all over here. So guys, the next step is that all you have to do is you have to use the use state hook all over here in which we are going to set our name, email and password. So as you can see, I have created const name and set name. So always remember that whenever we are writing set name, the set should be in small and the next keyword should be in capital letters. So as you can see, set email, set age, all are in capital letters. Okay. Now we have created our use state hook for all these functions. And at the end, what I'm going to do, I'm going to trigger the event all over here. So this is on change event. So while clicking, so I have used on change function equals to E set name E dot target dot value. Okay, guys. So here the value is name. So I'm using this value in this event. Similarly, I have used on change event all over here in setting the email. Similarly, I have used the on change for setting up the age. Similarly, on change for setting up the password. So in this way, we are building a user profile. Now let us see some of our CSS. So as you can see app, we have used text align left, margin left 20%, margin right 20%. Similarly, label display would be inline block, margin right 1EM, width 4REM. So in our app function, all you have to do is import our user profile. So let us see what we have achieved in our browser. So as you can see guys, here we have the H2 tag which says provide your profile details. Here we have name label, we have the email label, we have the age label and we have the password label and here we have the submit button. So guys, this was our today's hands-on session in which we built a simple form and did some event handling. That was all for today's session guys. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's session on React events and forms. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPath offers full stack web developer course in collaboration with ENICT Academy IIT Guwahati. Through this course, you can learn everything from front end web development to back end web development from esteemed IIT Guwahati faculties and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given below in the description and take a first step towards career growth in the field of web development.